Yeah. <coughs> Call this meeting to order of the City of Haywarden City Council meeting. It's a regular meeting. Um, it is Wednesday, May 8th, 2024 at 530. Starting with the standard agenda items. Uh, 1A, we've got <coughs> approval of the April 24, 2024 regular council meeting minutes. Take a motion. So moved. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Passes five to zero. And 1B, approval of the May 8, 2024 claims for payment. Do we have a motion? <coughs> I make a motion to approve the claims for payment. And a second. I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Passes five to zero. At this time, we have open business from the community. Uh, do we have anyone here that would like to speak tonight? Seeing none, we'll move on to the mayor's report. Uh, this is Nurse Appreciation Week. We honor and celebrate the hardworking and dedicated nurses who selfless, selflessly care for us and our loved ones. Your compassion, skill, and resilience make a difference in so many lives and we are grateful for all that you do. Thank you for being our health care heroes. I'd like to congratulate Mark DeSutter on being named the Iowa Knight of the Year by the Knights of Columbus. Your dedication and service to the community are truly commendable. This is a well-deserved recognition for all your hard work. Keep shining and inspiring others. Would also like to take this opportunity to thank and celebrate all the remarkable teachers who dedicate their time, energy, and passion to shaping the minds and hearts of our future generation. Your hard work and dedication do not go unnoticed, and we are grateful for all that you do. Happy Teacher Appreciation Week. <coughs> Yesterday, we hosted a luncheon for representatives from across the county to receive grants from the Siouxland Community Foundation. Grants were awarded to several local nonprofit organizations, including the Library, Arts Council, Emergency Services, Parks and Rec, among others. Uh, special <coughs> thanks to Carol Hugestrat for organizing uh, the luncheon. Um, that's all I have. We'll move on to staff reports. Jacob. I have nothing to report. Okay. Gary. Uh, I just have two things. Tonight will be Jacob's last council meeting uh, for a year or so. I just wanted to wish him well and at the same time wish me good luck. Um, we continue to search for police officers and are advertising and calling other departments in search of candidates <coughs> as well as considering all options available to us. It's been, um, it's been frustrating for many reasons, but uh, together I'm sure we'll find a solution. That's all I have. Okay, thank you. Tracy, do you have anything tonight? Okay, Travis. Uh, yes, I have a couple things. Uh, in 2017, the Iowa DNR did a free tree, tree inventory of the city of Hayward. They counted all the trees on city-owned property, including the right-of-way. They categorized the trees by species, size, and health. Um, this summer, we have another opportunity for them to come and do another inventory at no cost. Um, I estimate that since the last inventory, we've taken down 100 dead or dying trees. Um, this is counting the golf course who just this last year aggressively began removing dying ash trees. Uh, this will give us a plan for the future of how many trees are out there in, in poor condition. Um, although the emerald ash borer has not been confirmed in Haywarden, uh, the signs are, are here and we'll actively try to confirm the presence this summer. Uh, around June, they start to emerge, so we'll try and um, actively try and find them. And then uh, with the wet spring, staff feels confident that we can remove the water watch. Um, so we'll bring a resolution to the council at the next meeting. Um, although uh, we're still 
below average by 17 inches of rain in the last three years. So even though the wells are gaining this spring, they're not back to where we were. So I'd like to keep the water advisory in effect, which is it's just asking the citizens voluntarily conserve water where they can. On their own. On mean? their own. Yeah. There's no regulations. It's just a okay. ask to conserve voluntarily. So you'll see that resolution next council meeting. Okay. Thank you. And Jenny, did you have anything tonight? Moving on to other agenda items. Number three, we need to appoint a representative to the Northwest Iowa Regional. I'm sorry, council comments. Anybody have any council comments? No. I don't have any. Okay. Thank you. Uh, number three, appoint a representative to the <coughs> Northwest Iowa Regional Housing <coughs> Authority. Um, Gary, you want this? Sure. Um, we received a request from the North of Iowa Regional Housing Authority for the uh, to have some representation from the city. Uh, well, in the past, the city has had a representative, and Patty has graciously uh, volunteered to do that. It's a three-year commitment. Uh, the meetings are Zoom meetings. The uh, North of Iowa Regional Housing um, oversees all the Section 8 housing in, in the community, which is uh, <coughs> most of the subsidized uh, rental uh, apartments that we have in the, in the community. And so having representation, I think, would be helpful. And Patty's volunteered to do that, yeah. so. I'm familiar with the agency, too. I'll make that motion. Thank you. And a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor, say aye. 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 Abstain. <laughs> this is me. Thank you. Four to zero. It passes. Thank you, Patty, for taking You're welcome. That That's fine. Item number four, approval of special events application and hold harmless agreement. Oh, go ahead and take this one. Okay. So <coughs> we have People's Bank that is going to be doing a movie and popcorn event back here behind the building in the gazebo area on June 18th from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. They have filled out the application for that and have given me the proof of insurance and everything is ready to go for it. So our process is we just pa uh, pass it through council. Okay. I make a motion to approve the special events application. And a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of uh, approving that agreement, please say aye. 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 Opposed? No. <coughs> Passes by <coughs> zero. Thank you. Number five, review and approve of seal coat bids for the 2024 projects. The uh, bids were in the packets. Uh, you'll see that the road guy construction was $2.36 per square yard. Um, at 25,000 square yards, it'd be $59,000. Um, top coat was $2.54.4 um, and then there was a no bid from Beck Excavating. Um, recommend we go with Road Guy Construction. They've uh, had the low bid the last four years. They've done a pretty good job the last mm -hmm. times they were here so I just recommend approval of that one. Any questions or further discussion? I would take a motion then. I make a motion to approve the road guys um, seal coat bid of 59,000. Thank you, and a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? <coughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Passes five to zero. Thank you. Number six. Cash versus modified accrual audit expense savings. Okay, so as we've been kind of talking about this lately, we have been on a modified accrual for our um, electric revenue bonds, and this is the last one that we are doing for quite some time with the substation. Um, that being said, we've also been talking about trying to cut costs in our general fund budget, and our audit is a huge expense. Um, and it is one area that we could make an uh, instant cut in. I received a bid from Graham, uh, from uh, <coughs> Williams and Company, 
and with their bid, they said that keeping our modified accrual for this year, their um, estimated cost would be about 75500 And then with the cash basis, he uh, predicts since it's going to be the first time that it will come in anywhere between 45000 to 55000 So you can instantly see that it's going to be $20,000 cheaper to go with the cash basis. And I don't see any reason why we would want to continue to do the modified accrual at this time. Um, and then another thing that I just wanted to bring up is uh, that we were looking at this bid with Williams and Company because of a lot of the um, turnover and training. And at this time, we just don't think it's the best year to be looking out for different ones this time. We definitely plan to do that in the future. But right now, I think that we just want to keep with what we know to go forward. But I definitely recommend that we go with the cash basis. It's amazing how much uh, this bid has uh, increased over the last 20 years even. It's a huge expense. I, I don't have any problem going with cash basis. We were in a modified accrual, not totally accrual anyway. And I do agree with you, don't change right now. In addition to the savings uh, mm -hmm. from the auditor, it's a, a pretty extensive staff savings uh, in Huge. time as well yeah. in, in preparing for the audit. It is. So, uh, by going to cash versus uh, modified accrual, so there it will help Tracy out as well oh, yeah. during this time. And then we can go out um, and I think uh, the RFP for bids and the for next year uh, uh, from other auditors and mm -hmm. see what might be out there so okay. we don't need any decision tonight though right mm. or do you want to get a I feel? don't um, well Jenny do you think that we would need to get some would we need this on a resolution or would this be good with a voice vote to this just Okay, so if they're comfortable with just doing it, we could just uh, get it done and start getting our prep for the next budget or for the next audit that will be beginning at the end of June 30th. So, just this, yeah. unless you guys want longer to think about it, okay, can I get a motion? I'll make that motion that we go with the cash okay. basis. Thank you, and a second. I'll second that. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Passes five to zero. Thank you. Number seven, presentation of the fiscal year 2024 budget amendment and set the public hearing. All right. So now the budget amendment is completed and I'm going to go over it this meeting. Um, about the public hearing for it will be next meeting. <coughs> um, so with this, uh, we have the total front page, which kind of summarizes everything. Uh, this is what's submitted to the state of Iowa. I gave you guys additional notes so you guys could see what goes in down to each detail. Uh, total um, revenue increases is $3.8 million, and a lot of that actually does come from the hospitals increasing their revenues from their bonds getting in, and their expenses also go up down at the bottom. Um, and then our total expenses going out, our little uh, 5.3 million of that, uh, again, you have a lot from the hospital. And then we also have Avenue L expenses we amended for just to show the actual expenses that happened this year. That's we great. got the bonds in at the very end of last year. So it's gonna look a little upside down, but we had the money last year for mm -hmm. it. Um, to go through it, RUT, we received a little bit more. Lost monies, we received uh, quite a bit more than what we had budgeted for. So, and the city keeps 25% uh, of that. So you'll see that on the um, expense side as well for us sending the portion to the hospital additional more than what we budgeted. Use of money and property. Uh, we sold uh, those, the land lots. We got $118,000 worth of land lots sold. Um, we sold that fire truck for 20K. And we have revenue from uh, our new CDs that we started of 76,000. So. Um, quite a bit of uh, revenue inside there. Uh, insurance claim refund we amended for. Uh, that was the insurance at incident at the fire department, and they have an expense to account for it. So with <coughs> all of these, what we probably care more about is our expenses. 
and as you'll see, public safety, we have 122,000. A lot of that is grant revenue. Um, so grant expenses that happened that are covered by that. In my notes, I have everything is covered for by a revenue <coughs> that we brought in. And I have that marked next to each uh, expense. So we are actually um, transferring no money from the utilities to the general fund to cover any of these. We all have all of these were covered by that. Um, so we have the fire truck stuff. We have uh, Kaler consultant consulting and the chief ads and um, some building repair. And then our insurance audit also hit a lot of these um, sections to increase it by a little bit. Public works, one of the main things you got there is you got some concrete repairs, and we paid for those out of our RUP funds. We still have a healthy balance inside of RUP funds. Um, uh, down in culture and rec, some of the big items there. Uh, we painted the uh, baby pool this last year, which was an unbudgeted item. Uh, so we have to uh, account for that expense that happened. And then the senior center with their grants that they received from the multiple organizations to redo their kitchen area. So gave out loans for revolving loan funds. And that's 124000 out of the community and economic development. And legislative admin, we have uh, audit expense, which we are amending for to do the additional amount for this year, which was another big reason why we needed to look at how to save money in that. Um, salaries and benefits. And then uh, some legal fees that are attached with uh, a lot of our projects that we've been doing lately. So um, debt service, I put the L Street principal payment and the L Street interest because we hadn't had those budgeted last year, but the uh, first payments were due. And capital projects, I have those amended in there, the total L Street expenses and um, closing out some of those. <coughs> And that is pretty much the full rundown of the high, uh, our items inside this uh, budget amendment. Thank you, Jacob. And this is just setting the public hearing for it. So I just wanted to go through it, give you guys a chance to look at it. And if you guys have any questions, you guys can continue to reach out to me. Thank you. Um, OK to set the, the public hearing on the budget. Um, do we have a motion? I make a motion to set the public hearing on the amended budget. And a second? I'll second that. Further discussion? We'll do a roll call. Anderson? Aye. Harvey? Clucky? Yes. Warner? Yes. Allen. Aye. Passes five to zero. Thank you. Item number eight, resolution 2024-16, a resolution setting the time and place for hearing and directing publication of notice of time and place for hearing on proposed amendment. All right. So this is a resolution to set the public hearing <coughs> for next meeting. Uh, this is looking at rezoning a, uh, a bit of R1 residential, and I'll pull up a map of it here in a second, and they want to um, rezone it to I2 so they can build a shop there, where, um, and it is butting up next to an I2. It is on the corner of 22nd and Avenue D. Um, on this map, it kind of is right up here, right up and against, so this is really in there so there's an i2 right there already so it's bedding up against it and we would be looking at changing that there <coughs> um, we had a planning and zoning for that on april 30th where it passed five to two to recommend uh, moving forward with it it's going to be four hundred fifty thousand dollars estimated uh, cost of work to be done for trent russ and here is a little bit better of a picture of about where it would be um, there for that. So, and this resolution is for setting the public hearing for next meeting. I guess my opinion on that area, I bet over 20 years ago, you know, the mayor and the clerk went around town and they kind of noted where they thought 
zoning should be changed and then it eventually got changed um, but at that time that whole north area up there there wasn't anything there hardly and now it's developed into a residential area in the pit area and up in the new housing and you continue to see that and I don't think that I guess I don't agree with rezoning that and I would like to look at that whole area period and we shouldn't have an I-2 up in there near those houses and stuff and I, I thought that there was going to be an interest um, well just south of um, the new housing area there where the, uh, chamber economic developments trying to sell land and some of the city land I, th I was thinking that was always they were interested in selling it for housing. And as if that continues to develop in housing, I just think we need to look at that whole new area because it, it developed into residential and you don't put residential next to semi trucks and that's my opinion. Okay. This is just to set the time and place for a hearing, so. I just wanna give my opinion. Yeah, no, that's fine. I, do we need to have a public hearing? Or do we do say this in the public hearing? It would be said at the public hearing. I think it's worth okay. Because this did go through planning and yes. zoning. Correct. Yeah. Well, my opinion's out there, so. I agree with you, Patty. And I agree with Patty and Doc as well. It just remain residential. I mean, we can, uh, so at the public hearing is when I should voice my opinion. Okay. <laughs> Just do it again. Okay. I mean, we need to set the public hearing. Okay. Okay. I would make a motion to set the public hearing. I'll second that motion. Okay. For the discussion. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Okay, that passes five to zero. Um, we are at adjournment. Okay. Motion to adjourn. So moved. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, no. Passes five to zero. Thank you. Thank you for attending tonight. Our next meeting will be May 8th. We are adjourned. All right. <laughs>